Okay. Oh, man, I'm telling you. I love this church. I love you people. You're awesome. Are we online yet? Yes, sir. Oh, hi, people out there. Last week, I didn't know if we were online or not, so I came over and I played with his foot pedals. And then I watched it back, and I'm like, oh, that was immature. But I didn't know what else to do. So, mm. so I'm going to talk today. I'm going to teach today. Simple, very simple. But I pray it's going to change your life. I know it's going to change your life because it's the Word of God. And I'm going to, yeah, come on, man. Come on. Just give him a shout of praise. Come on, church. So here's my, here's my thinking process right here. Deception. I mean, it's, it's deception is so bad because it gets in and it twists God's perfect will in your life and it sends you on another journey. Imagine, imagine you driving on train tracks and somebody convinces you that driving in the grass is better. As soon as you get in that grass, your train derails and crumbles. So I was... I went to Publix last night, you know, and I'm, I'm at Publix, and there's, there's this guy out there, and he's playing a saxophone, like, by one of the stores that are closed down, and he's got, he's playing to music, and he was, I didn't read his sign, because, let me tell you something, if you're homeless, put something short so we can read it right away. He had a book out there, like, you know, like, it just kept going, and turn it over, and, but, so, he was playing and I went inside to get something. He was playing, um, uh, what was that song he was playing? It was um, Over the Rainbow. And he was doing such a beautiful job. And I'm like, he needs money. I don't know if he was homeless. I don't know what it was. Couldn't read a sign. It had 37 words on it. So I, I go into Publix. I get what I'm going to get. And then I come out. And I'm going to go talk to him now. I want to go pray for him, love on him, do whatever, give him some money. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I get in my car because, see, I don't know. You never know. If the enemy is deceiving you. So sometimes God will put you in the path of people so that you can put them, they're, they're, they're like, their hands are on the, the, if a train has a steering wheel, I know it doesn't, but their hands are on the steering wheel and they're ready to derail. And, and your little moment of prayer can change your life. So I get out of the store and I'm driving my car. And I'm like, roll my window down. I'm trying to see if, he, if he's playing something. He's not playing something. He's talking to some people. I'm like, well, that's all right. I'm going to interrupt him anyway. So I go over there, and I try to, to converse with the man playing the saxophone, and he's got his head down, and two people are praying for him. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I wanted to do that. <laughs> but how many of you not-so-young people know that if you, don't, if you don't do what God tells you to do when he tells you to do it, some young generation is going to come right up underneath you and do it? So I'm up there, and I'm like, now, who's praying for this guy? And I woke up, and it's Cole and Olivia. <laughs> and are they here? Are you guys here today? There they are. I wanted to pray for him. What did you do? What did you tell him? Did you bless him, pray for him? Oh, it was so cool, man. And I, and I stopped the car. And he, everybody's head was down, their eyes were closed. His saxophone's hanging like this, and Cole's laying hands on him. Livy's laying there praying for this guy. I'm like, is this the coolest thing in the world or what? Man, I'm telling you, two young, not even 20 years old, not even 19, and they're doing what we should be doing on a regular basis. Praise God. So you know what you guys did? You, you alleviated a potential deception in that man's life and reminded him that Jesus loved him. And that's all God wants us to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into something today. And how do, we, how do we keep from not only being deceived by others, but being deceived by our own self? There, we, it's guaranteed other people are going to deceive you. It's guaranteed. And it's also guaranteed that you're going to deceive you too. It's worse when you deceive you than if somebody else deceives you. So... Once we understand the deception, we can attain the victory. Just once you know the plan of the enemy, once we understand the deception, we can attain the victory. You say, Joe, what does that mean? If you're, if you're listening and you, you know your Bible, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify that. We're not going to attain the victory for ourselves. The victory is already attained for us. 
We're just going to step in and take what's already ours. Does that make sense? Okay. So God wants to grow, grow us on a personal level. Literally, he wants to grow us on a personal level. He protects that relationship between you and him. I know you say, Joe, I don't understand how that works. God protects his relationship between you and him. He's always running after you. He's always seeking after you. He's always reaching out to you. Because let me tell you something. God doesn't want anyone to lose. Now, I said that several times in the church, but I need you to understand this church. And if you're watching online, God doesn't want you to lose. And the people that do you wrong, he don't want them to lose either. So if you'll just take your eyes off of the deception, because the deceiver is trying to get you to focus on that which just hurt you, rather than focus on God, which already has a plan to go beyond the person that just hurt you. But we're more focused on when are they going to get what they get. Don't worry about it. God doesn't want them to get what they get. God wants them to be blessed, just like he wants you to be blessed. Well, I want that person to suffer. What about the person that wants you to suffer? Yeah, amen. yeah come on. Come on, church. You getting a hold of this? I didn't think of it that way. So God is always trying to get you closer to him because it buries the devil's already defeated government. And he wants you to walk in victory. You say, I, Joe, everybody talks about that. I know. Now let's talk about how to do it, okay? Let's talk about the deception. Just because we're believers... That doesn't mean we can't be deceived. So Matthew 24, 23 and 24 says this, <clears throat> and 25. It says, then if anyone tells you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders. So as to deceive, there it is, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Mm. See, I have warned you about this already ahead of time, God says. This is Jesus talking right here. Jesus is saying there are going to be people that say, this is the second coming, I'm the Messiah, and they're going to get the elite people and deceive them. The, one, the pastors, the evangelists, the, the 20-year Christians, the devil can deceive you at the drop of a hat if you don't know he's going to do it. But once you know he's going to do it, and you know your Bible, and it says no man knows the day or the hour, you will never know the day or the hour. He comes like a thief in the night. You don't know when the thief's coming, or you'd lock your doors. You'd have somebody stand guard. So what I'm trying to say here is the enemy deceives you in sending people your way to try and change the plan God has for you that that person can't change anyway. Come on. You getting a hold of that? You say, but Joe, this is literally about the Messiah. What about today? Where do you think it starts? He, he's showing you ultimate deception here. And God's like, it comes in little tiny forms so you can't recognize it. Let me show you. Watch. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. We'll start with that. Listen to the first three words of this, of this chapter. It says, don't you realize... Paul says, don't you realize? He spoke this 10 times in 1 Corinthians. Don't you realize, he says, that together you have become God's inner sanctuary and that the Spirit of God makes his permanent home in you? Don't you know that nobody can deceive you because God has already planted himself in you, which means he came with a plan that cannot be changed? That's why Paul so many times says, don't you realize? Come on, people. I don't care if you're a teenager, you're a child, or you're old, or whatever you are. You can't be deceived because he has made a sanctuary in you. And he's brought his people. You say, God's got people? Figuratively speaking. He brought his authority. He brought his power. He brought his glory. He brought his Holy Spirit. He moved in and kicked the Mucinex man out. Amen? So now watch this. Watch this. He that is in you will lead you. Satan doesn't like that. Why do you think he sends out deception? Because he don't like it. He does not like it. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want that to happen. So... He wants self-deception so that you can do what makes sense to the flesh. Okay, hold on a minute. The enemy's job 
is not to get someone else to deceive you. Oh, I bet you didn't know that. The enemy's job is to get you to deceive you. It's like, for instance, an addict of some sort. Do you think that an addict wakes up one day and says, I think I'm going to start drinking and destroy my life and everybody around me. I think I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start using. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start using, and uh, I think I'm going to be a prostitute, and um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to destroy me. No. They begin addictions out of hurt. Bondage attaches itself to you and destroys you. What you need to realize is the person that is addicted is the same self-deception as you and I are because the enemy comes very small. The enemy doesn't, if you're a user, somebody doesn't walk up to you on the street, if you're not a user, excuse me, you're, you're, you just got out of church and somebody walks up to you and goes, hey man, I got this for you right here. Let's, you know, let's go get high. You're going to go, get away from me, dude. Who are you? But the person that knows you and loves you and is friends with you, are you hearing me, or at least is going to appear to love you at the moment you don't feel loved. The enemy's like, here we go, here we go. And they sneak it in just this one time. Just right here, you and me. We're just, we're just going to kill it off, and tomorrow we'll go back to being okay again. The enemy gets you to say, if you say yes at that moment, then you just entered into self-deception. Why? Why? Because you couldn't see a way out, so you engaged you. Are you hearing me? Well, Joe, we already know that. It doesn't make a difference. You'll do it. When the, when the time is right, when the perfect storm aligns itself, the enemy knows just who to send your way. Just know, just know what to say to, to get you talking about the person that just hurt you so that they can engage their peace. It's not the person. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the principalities of darkness. We do not fight against the people. We fight against the enemy that has authority over them. Does that make sense? Okay, so now listen. Watch this now. So you have to be so in tune with God and not worry about what the world is going to or attempts to think they're going to do to you because Jesus, the word of God says this through Paul, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through him. It says, now if someone desecrates God's inner sanctuary, God will desecrate him for God's inner sanctuary is holy and that is exactly who you are. God's like, don't you worry about anybody doing anything to you. I am living in you. Come on, man. Are you hearing me? If you let God, if you become one with God in John 17 when he prayed, he says, Father, me and you are one and and they are one with us. Once you understand the concept of that, then you understand deception doesn't live in in your even realm. You will not be deceived. Bad decisions will not be made. Bad relationships will not be engaged. Ridiculous thoughts, addictions, bondages will not come upon your life because you are focusing, you are letting that which manages your inner sanctuary run everything. But what we do, you say, well, Joe, I think I do that. You do, but now watch, let me show you how it happens. As soon as something happens in your life that gets in your skin, you're strong right now this very moment, but as soon as something gets in your skin, somebody might be watching right now, you're on your last, I can't do anymore, I don't know what else to do, then what you do is you build frustration, you start listening to the deception of the enemy, and the enemy is trying to tell you to drive your train in the grass, and you will try anything for a moment of of peace, amen? Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Okay, I I, I know this because if you take that in the physical, I had a, I had a, um, a tooth that went rogue about seven years ago. And I don't, I don't like to take medication, so I didn't take anything. But I was online trying every goofy remedy. I was chewing on garlic. I was cloves. I, 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 I was building gardens, and I, I would have done anything. I would have put my head underwater and sang the national anthem if it would have took the pain away. But I was willing to do anything to remove the pain, just like the enemy knows you're willing to do anything to remove the pain. Don't go outside of the inner sanctuary to find peace, because it's already in you. Did you hear that? Write that down. If you're at home, write it down. Stop the video, write it down, and come back. I ain't going anywhere. Here we go. <clears throat> now watch this. So, in verse 18 of 1 Corinthians 3, it says, So why fool yourselves and live under an illusion? Why do we do that? Because we have no understanding for that. 
I'm going to read a footnote here that I thought was brilliant. It says, for every verse that warns us about being deceived by others, there is a verse to warn us about being self-deceived. So as much as someone's trying to deceive you, what they're trying to say here is, watch, watch, listen, listen, listen. It says, so why fool yourselves and live under an illusion? The only way, my friends, that you can be deceived is if you are first self-deceived. You can't be deceived and then self-deceived comes. You have to receive deception and that comes from you being self-deceived in who you are. Does anybody not understand that? Raise your hand. I'll start all over again. Someone online just raise their hand. Sorry. No. Are you hearing me? So you say, well, I don't understand what that means. Don't worry about some human being deceiving you. They can't do it if you are not being deceived. If you do not allow self-deception come inside you, no human being on the planet can deceive you. Why? Because you're holding on to the inner sanctuary, which is him, and he will not allow it to happen. But as soon as you let somebody make sense to you, that's because you're going outside your inner sanctuary and trying to make sense of life yourself and taking advice from everybody that's coming around you. Amen? Somebody say amen. Okay, good. You're still here. So now watch this. Watch this. Make no mistake about it. If anyone thinks he is wise by the world standards, he will be made wiser by being a fool for God. So when you think you got it all together, God's going to show you how much you don't. Because it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by his spirit. So once you think you can get yourself out of something, you can buy your way out of something, you can drink your way out of something, you can drug your way out of something, you can sleep your way out of something for the adults that are in the room, so I don't have to explain it to the kids. You are being deceived. And the word of God literally says, I will make a fool of you and show you you have no power. I love you so much, God says, that I'm going to take over this inner sanctuary if you'll just let me. It's just us not letting him. Somebody please get a hold of this because it's going to save your whole life. I promise you will. Excuse me. So now watch this. So in other words... You have to become ignorant to the way of the world's things if you want to truly understand God's things. Now, hold on a second. I want to explain that to you. You have to be ignorant to the world if you want to understand God. Knowledge is what you attain. Understanding is by the Holy Spirit. So if you want the Holy Spirit to bring understanding to you in clarity and revelation, then what you have to do is you have to ignore the way of the world and seek him even if what you're doing doesn't make sense. Even if you're just waiting and it doesn't make sense. Even if you're, if you're yearning for God and you say, I still don't feel peace. Hold on. He's not going to let you go. I promise you he's not going to let you go. The only thing that's going to stop God from entering into you with peace, the gift that he gave you, which is already in you, is if you're trying to do things on your own. Because if you're trying to do them on your own, you're not letting him work. And God is a gentleman and he sits down and he says, when you're done, I'll start. But I'm not getting up till you sit down. Okay? So now watch this. For the world says, excuse me, for what the world says is wisdom is actually foolishness in God's eyes. Isn't this great? He says right here, he goes, as it is written, the cleverness of the know-it-alls become the trap that ensnares them. Man, I wish I'd have thought of that. The cleverness of the know-it-all becomes the trap that ensnares them. Even Christians that think they know everything are in a trap. You know nothing. You don't know enough to know nothing when it comes to God. All he wants is submission and obedience. That's all he wants is submission and obedience. Amen? Because he's got a plan that you can't understand. We get in his way so much, it's unbelievable. So watch this now, watch this. So it becomes the trap. Now, the Greek word of the trap literally literally means to firmly grasp, literally to close your fist and firmly grasp and not let go. That's what the enemy does to the clever. He looks for those people that think they're clever. He'll even send somebody your way to uplift you and tell you how magnificent you are in hopes that it'll trigger you to go on your own journey. Your trust is completely in God or deception begins. It's a grip. Now, I'm going to explain this to you. In Job chapter 5, verse 13, listen to this because it's all throughout the Bible. You've got to know how to connect the dots here. In Job 5, 13, it says, he traps the wise in their own cleverness so their cunning schemes are thwarted. Wow. Isn't that something? He traps the cleverness in their own, so their own schemes are thwarted. 
That's God protecting them in Job. But in the, in the world today, the enemy tries to get you to gain cleverness so you don't gain godliness. Amen? I'm going to show you how this works. Watch this. So the world has such a grip on you that it causes you to have a grip on the world. Let me show you where deception takes place. It's very simple. I'm, I mean, my message is almost over because I don't want to talk a long time today. I want to just deliver a point so you can hold on to it. I'm going to need, um, I'm going to need somebody to come up here. Now, Cole, since you're so elegant in your prayer to the saxophone player, why don't you come on up here and help me? Come on, Cole. Mm-hmm. Praise God, he's a good kid. Come here, man. You doing all right? You nervous? Okay. Everybody's looking at you. No? Okay. Okay, so watch now. So, the cleverness of the know-it-alls becomes the trap that ensnares them. Let me show you how the enemy traps you. Money grabs you, you grab money. Power grabs you, you grab power. So if I, if this is power right here, step over here if you would. If this is power right here in life, I yearn for power. When the enemy knows that you seek the things of the flesh greater than the things of God, he will begin to attempt to attach them to you. So when power grabs me, grab me, you better use two hands, buddy. That's a big arm. There you go. <laughs> he had to grab the forearm because he can't put his little hands around the bicep. Ho! Now, right in the middle of my point, I have to make some funny because I want you to realize how simple it is. Nothing can distract you. So power grabs you. This is power with your right hand. That's power. Money grabs you because money and power go together. Once it grabs hold of you, if you don't have yourself attached to the word of God, then it's not the power and the money that is grabbing you that hurts you and deceives you and sends you on a miserable journey in life. It's when you enjoy it more than the word of God and you grab it. You see? So now, come over here with me. Don't want to lose this grip here because it's a tough one. Watch this now. The word trap, because the Bible says that, that the clever people, the trap ensnares them. That trap word literally means, like I said, to firmly grasp and to close the fist. In other words, we're not just laying our hand on you. We have engaged the thumb and closed the fist. And so now he is grabbing onto me, and I'm grabbing onto him. Do you see this? Now, where are we going to achieve the glory of God if I am just playing my whole life with the enemy? Wait a minute. Did anybody understand that? It comes anywhere. It comes anywhere. Hold, hold on a second. You go sit down because this will not work if I use you. Terry, come here, please. It'll look really weird, and we'll get a lot of emails. Come here, babe. Gentlemen, let me show you something. Ladies, let me show you something. <clears throat> Don't be in a rush to find Miss... This is my wife, by the way. Don't be in a rush to find Mr. or Mrs. Right. Your clock's not ticking. God owns the clock, not you. Amen? He knows the plan he has for you. It may not be right now. I w you you want to preach now? You don't want Mr. Right now. You don't <laughs> she says you don't want Mr. Right now. So... <laughs> Thanks, babe. So I told this so many times. I talk about our foundation group that we are a people that are like, we, girls, you're out there praying for Mr. Right. And, and, and I hate to say this. This might not sound too nice. But girls, you're not going to get Mr. Right until you're Mrs. Right. Because if Mr. Right comes along, then Mr. Right's going to be messed up by Mrs. Right. Or Mrs. Wrong, excuse me. And same thing with the guys. It's just guys don't think on that level, you know. So, gentlemen, when you are being deceived and you're a godly man, and I see this happen all the time. I have seen people throughout the years sit in the pews and be sideswiped by a woman just like that. Just taken out of church just like that. Well, I'm going to try and convert her. No, she's already got you out of church. Babe, I'll vice versa when it's my time. So now, watch this, watch this. So if you're going along your journey and you're focused on God, how many, how many people know that 
you go to clubs and all these places to find the woman of your dreams, gentlemen, when God's like, you need technology to find a woman now? I, I'm God. I'll, that's how I found her. I wasn't looking for her. She crossed my path. I crossed hers, and the rest was history. But it, we didn't have to go and, 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 you know, seek out all these things. And I'm not saying, you know, don't socialize. I'm just saying, what I'm saying is if you're on the right path and you're, and you're in the word of God and you just got your life right and you're trusting the Lord and you're not leaning on your own understandings and you understand it's not by might nor power, it's by my spirit. And you just came out of a, a depressive thing and you, 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 you're just now getting your confidence back. And all of a sudden it's like, all of a sudden when you're walking, this person attaches themselves to you. You see? This, this woman attached, but she's not Mrs. Right. She's not who you're supposed to be with. Well, how am I supposed to know it? The signs are everywhere. If they, if they don't understand this right here, they're not for you. But I can change them. No, you can't. They're going to change you. Amen. Amen? Okay, so now hold on. So what you do is you have got to understand that the deception of the enemy is trying to get you to self-deceive so that the enemy can move in. And as soon as you look, it's okay to look, but when you see, when you start imagining what you're gonna look like walking down the street with this woman, then you do this. And once you do this, nobody's consulted God. Well, if it's God, then you take her away from me. No. You, the, the, the writings are on the wall. Don't be an immature Christian and tell God to do everything for you. If the person is not right, then go away. But what if another one doesn't come along? It will, trust me. But the right one will come along. Same way with the guy. Same way with the guy. Some of you ladies have just found your time with Jesus in church, and this guy's going to come along and just, hey, baby. You know? It's okay. W women, are more, women are more shake the hand off like that and get away from me than guys are. But if you're desperate, ladies... If you're desperate, you say, why are we talking about relationship? Because I'm, not, I'm too young to ever. Forget it. Listen, watch. It's going to happen to everybody someday, even if you're old. I saw this couple online. They were dating, 85 years old. It was great. The funniest thing was is the, the lady, the guy is 85 years old, and the person was talking to him, and he said, I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> so the guy says, that's why you must have the woman there to explain what's going on. Anyway, it was funnier when they said it. So, so now... Ladies, the guy comes along, and as he comes along and grabs his hand, he's going to promise you everything because you're sick of being broke. You're sick of not having a car. You're sick of not having someone to cuddle with and watch Hallmark movies. You're sick of no, no popcorn in your house. So all of a sudden, what, what ends up happening, you see right here, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is the guy is promising you all that, but he's not attaching it to this. You see? So what you do is while it's making sense, you gently grab and hold on. Now you just attach yourself to what the enemy attached to you. He doesn't care. God is not interested if the enemy grabs you. He's interested and knows deception is involved if you grab back. Amen? Are you hearing that? Because that goes across the board, and that's how deception takes place. The things of the flesh are what pull you away from the glory of God. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Be careful going on them steps. I'm going to have to stop the service and pick you up. Okay, I can go on and on and on and on about that, but I quit. So now, um, verse 20 says, and I'm just about done here. And again, the Lord sees right through the clear reasonings of the wise and knows that it's all a sham. But Lord, I'm just going to change that person. I'm going to just, I'm not going to go to church this week because I'm going to try and help this girl. We're going to go to the beach and I'm going to try and tell her about you. I just got done using, Lord, and I, I, I think I'm over it, but I'm going to go to my friend's house. I'm going to try and talk him out of it. That's, that's, and I watch what it says right here in Psalms 94 11 because David knows all. He, he, he experienced it all. It says, the Lord has fully examined every thought of man and found them all to be empty and futile. <laughs> so if you're engaging on how to make things better, forget about it. God has a plan. So now, here I'm going to close down the thought process of everything I just set up for you with this right here. Verse 21 says, so don't be proud of your allegiance to any human leader. Are you hearing me? 
Some people take that wrong. I'm going to explain that in a minute. They're talking about godly people here, and not for that matter. For actually, you already have everything. It has all been given for your benefit, whether it is Paul or Apollos or Peter the Rock. What, what Paul is trying to say here is <clears throat> literally, when you attach yourself to a leader, are you hearing now? I, I did that whole thing so you can get this part right here. When you attach yourself to a leader, a leader attaches themselves to you. Now you don't get to grow because you are attached with a cap right here. You attach yourself to God himself. You attach yourself to the word of God, to the blood of the lamb, to the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't attach yourself to leaders. You don't have allegiance to a leader. You have allegiance to God. Church, if you understand nothing for the rest of your life, you will grow in your faith if you just understand that right there. Allegiance to God. He goes on to say, to Paul goes on to say, whether it is Paul whether it is me, he's saying, or it is Apollos, which was the, 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 the pastor, or if it was even Peter the rock, whom, God, whom Jesus built his church on the revelation that God gave him. Even if it's Peter, he said. Now he goes even deeper. He says, or whether it's the world, or even if it's life, or even if it's death, whether it's present or whether it's future, everything belongs to you. You don't have to attach yourself to anything. Mm. Okay, I, I want to just let this go, but if I don't break it down, somebody might not get it. If you think you need to attach yourself to life to make things better, you're deceived. If you think you need to kill yourself because you think it's going to make things better, you're deceived. If you think you need to attach yourself to me, the pastor, you're deceived. If you think you need to attach yourself to some superstar, pastor, you're deceived. Or a worship team, you're deceived. Or a church, you're deceived. We are attached to him. And with that comes everything. Amen? In doing so, in doing so, it says, and now, and I'll just back up what I just said with the word in verse 23, it says, and now you are joined to the Messiah who is joined to God. Stop attaching yourself to people, to things, to power, to your own self deception of what you think you need to do. God's sanctuary is in you. He doesn't tease you. He doesn't play games with you. He tells you straight up front what he wants, and he will guide you, and he will lead you. Amen? Amen. Don't let the world deceive you in any way. I thought you'd give me a shout of praise for that. Give him a shout of praise for that. Come on, church. Come alive. So, I'm going to... Finish the whole thing. Worship team, if you wouldn't mind coming back here for a second. Don't let man get a grip on you. I'm going to just read what I wrote. Don't let man get a grip on you. Don't let the world get a grip on you. Don't let life get a grip on you or death get a grip on you. Don't, get a, uh, don't let anything on the planet get a grip on you. God already has a grip on you, and your allegiance is to him and him alone. Everything else will bring self-deception, and that brings destruction. So the root of every problem <clears throat> that we have is because we attach our thinking process to the wrong thing. The reason we attach our thinking process to the wrong thing is because the root of sin comes from rejection. Satan was rejected like lightning from heaven, and so the spirit of rejection covers the earth, and greater rejection covers the people. So everything that sparks your mind to go in a different direction is stemmed from rejection. Amen? And if you do not keep your eyes on the Lord then the rejection engages deception, which engages destruction. I'll say it again. Rejection engages deception, self-deception, not by man, by you, which engages destruction. No man will ever deceive you another moment of your life as long as you hold yourself on the one that has built his sanctuary within you. Amen, church? Come on, stand up. Jesus. Mm. 
figure out if we know something with holy in it. <clears throat> Jen, Jen, we, we appreciate you, Jen. If you're online right now, if you're sitting in this room, if you've never known this Jesus that I'm talking about, I'm telling you, you're just on a downward slide. I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. You will when you get there. I don't, I can do, I can, I got enough. I can make my own way happen. That's, that's the lie from the pit of hell. The Lord says, I gave my son so that I can bless you here and in eternity. If you don't know that, Jesus, what are you waiting for? I don't understand what we're waiting for. It's like a person that's dying from a snake bite. Give me another day. Give me the venom. Put that baby right in me. We're just going to pray that that God gave the doctor the venom. Put it in you. You see? I'm just going to wait. What are we waiting for? I don't understand this. People online go, I'm waiting because I'm not ready to change yet. You don't have to change. All you need to do is say yes to Jesus, and he'll come in you. If he occupies the inner sanctuary, he'll remove what he doesn't like. And he'll do it in a way that you actually want him to do it. So take a moment and say, Lord, I know you're real. I've known it from the beginning. There's no way I cannot know you're real. I I, I take you in my life, Jesus. All that you did on that cross for me, I take you right in here right now. And you are my Savior And you are my God. And I hold you dear to me. Deception leaves. Fear leaves. Pain leaves. The more you hold on to him. I believe somebody right now, standing in this room even, needs to know this Jesus. He's so real. Come on, I want you to bow your heads. If you just made that declaration, find somebody online. Find somebody that you can tell that to. Get to a church. Start reading your Bible. Start helping. Start getting along the journey because it's only the beginning. And we're going to see you next week, and we're going to deal with family business here. Love you. Bye-bye.